good morning guys it's time to say good morning actually after that lunch right i had the best session timing just before lunch and now i have the worst <laughs> or the more challenging and with him saying the dal and rice was good is becoming more challenging so <laughs> i'll try to still finish in 30 minutes so um, my topic today is you know driving customer value through value in experience um can you hear everyone at the back okay you can't hear okay so you know we see a lot of these software products out there in the market users are pretty confused about which products to use and one would think that on the other side the product companies the software companies creating those products would be doing their job and know what it is right what product to create the product strategy and product definition but believe me they are in the same boat which products to create in the next 2 3 years in the near future and mostly product definition is driven by competitors because the competitor is doing it because there's a new device out because there's a new technology or platform right and a lot of ideas are floating around for you know products in a particular company so at best i would say that they are equally lost and confused as well these are the questions they are asking and the motivation for this work actually came from a client who was actually asking these questions what product should we build for the near future in the next 2 3 years some of our competitors are you know jumping on the bandwagon of mobile tablet should we do that or not right how do we define those future products which ones would be successful with our customers right and what is the approach we should you know take to build these products how should we define future products so that's the question they were asking and so we tried the shortcut <laughs> we went to astrologers to look in the crystal ball and to tarot card readers you know tell me and we also tried the traditional parrot trick from india the parrot almost lost the job because <laughs> that was not the thing to be done what i believe and i'm trying to now make an hypothesis here what we believed is that companies mid or small or large today have plenty full of resources investments the new technology that comes it's available to them markets are open to them money is available to them so all of these things being constant i think why are only some companies doing good and some are not some products really fail some products don't and i think the differentiating factor here is the experience so this is our hypothesis the fonts have changed actually <laughs> they don't have roboto so given that markets technology investment etc is constant to define future products this is the hypothesis that we came up with we have to define experience which means we have to define future experience because they want to look at 3 years and experience over time so this is the hypothesis uh, that that we came up with and i'm just going to talk about what experience is right so these are definitions of customer experience and user experience and i'm going to interchangeably talk about both cx and ux because if you see there are a lot of commonalities right experience ultimately is a sum of all experiences anybody a user or customer a person has with a service provider the company the products the services etc right over a period of time right so user experience is again use or anticipated use so i'm generally loosely going to kind of talk about these two aspects some of all experiences and experience over a period of time that that sums up experience well so if you look at some of all experiences which is your perceptions behaviors attitudes and emotions how do we get deeper into this how do we say from a perception or a behavior and attitude that the same attitude and behavior will, will remain over a period of time right so we probably need to look at something that is deeper than these internal processes 
which are changing. And they change because of the design or the product, right? Internal states are not very good predictors as well. The third point is what people actually desire are not the services themselves, but the experiences the services provide. And the user evaluates experience on the grounds of their own value hierarchy. So I'm kind of making a point here. And uh, the definition of value we'll see in a moment. Let's talk about the second aspect that we just talked about, experiencing over time. So when we talk about experience, we are not just talking about interaction experience, right? Which is the during usage experience. Our experiences are formed from an anticipated experience, that is before usage, during usage, after usage, and then over time, it's cumulative experience. And all of these experiences are overlapping with each other. They are not like a waterfall serial thing, but they overlap with each other, and they are also cyclical. Okay? So the total sum of experiences and experience over time is what we intend to find out. There are other drivers of experience that you can see. You know, customers always say, make it useful, make it easy, make it enjoyable. And the experience there offers the value. And it is also easy to measure the value. Okay? There are other drivers of value itself, which are the emotions. I'm sure many of you must have seen this chart, right? There's a hierarchy of emotions. And there are different clusters. The destroying cluster is the bottom of the pyramid. And if you have to drive value, then you have to take the users or give the users the experience that is at the top of the pyramid, which is the advocacy cluster. And then in the middle, you have attention cluster. And then you have recommendation cluster as well. So given that all of these things are true, let's focus, off, focus on the value in experience. Why? Because values of users are more permanent. These values govern a value hierarchy that the user has and the experience as well. Okay? So users don't just you know, experience because of the product, but because of their values or value systems as well. And that's, that's the basis of our research here. So to define experience and define future experience, plus experience over time, we have to go into deeper into value and experience. And what value and experience is, it's the user's iterative interpretation and evaluation of user experience according to how qualities and consequences of experience assist or hinder the user. Right? So these are some of the features of values which I spoke about. Value resides, and sorry about the you know, text, uh, can you see at the back? I think it's changing the fonts. Yes? Okay. So value resides not in the object of consumption itself, but in the experience of consumption. And users uniquely experience the value of a service within their own personal context. And as I said, there is a value hierarchy. And users judge, and they form specific expectations, needs, goals, habits, perceptions because of this value hierarchy. Users experience value in dynamic processes of experiencing and interpreting in an ongoing iterative way. Okay? And that's the reason we are focusing on value in experience. This value framework is uh, taken from a research um, done at VTT uh, Research. Um, and the value framework talks about two types of values. One is the user value and the other is the service value. Users, user values are intrinsic to the users, and they represent triggers that touch users at emotional level. And service values are representation of the quality of the service, right? So essentially, what the product brings to the table. So if you look at service values, so this entire model has multiple values that are defined by researchers. And they also have you know, different categories and value dimensions. So in service values, you will find values like uh, functional or convenience value, 
quality and performance value, personalization value, localization value. And these are then further broken down into up-to-dateness, context sensitiveness, or all of these. So I'm not going to go into details of these. And then there are user values. User values are broken down into social, benevolence, safety, traditional, simulation and epistemic, growth and self-actualization. And then they are further broken down into all these different elements. So just to show you that, you know, this is the table that was the base of, this is the research. And as you can see, the service values are broken down into value dimensions, which are functional, and then in convenience, there are multiple value parameters. And below each, you can actually see uh, who the researcher was. They have done a lot of research on these and come up with a description. So for example, if you're talking about uh, functional value, convenience, discoverability, it means easily discoverable service offering and the contents within. So just to show that this is real and real research has been done. So as a consulting firm, we don't have the luxury to just put on models and say, you know, now we can't do anything. The motivation was, you know, the uh, companies asking us what product should we build in the future. So we came up with an approach. And the approach was to understand the current experience, define future experience, and then define future product strategy. Okay. It seemed, so all of this, whatever I'm showing right now is a culmination of long hours of research and also the model. So it almost seemed like a uphill battle to even create a particular model and then work on it for about four months. So therefore, I have designed this model as a chakra vyuha. How many are familiar with that? Chakra vyuha. A lot of people. So I'll explain a little bit. In the old days, grand days of Mahabharata, the parties used to fight each other. And then they, they, they were very nice with each other. Okay? They used to say, I'll make a formation today. You send somebody to break the formation. If you break it, you get one point. And the next day, I do the same thing. And then you get one point. And this goes on for 30 days. And whoever you know, has more points will win. Okay? So this is a famous story that Arjuna's son, Abhimanyu, he had the knowledge of this chakra view, how to go inside. And it was really very difficult for him. So if you see, the path actually goes like this and it turns, makes a U-turn till you go inside the chakra vyuha. And the story goes on that Abhimanyu actually died there because he didn't know how to come back out. We are still alive. Thank you. Um, so the three circles that I showed earlier, these are the three circles, concentric circles that go. The outside circles is the one where you understand the current experience. Understand the business goals, the vision of the customers, understand market trends, industry trends, what is competition doing, what is the social buzz around that particular industry, and then understand user's current experience. This is the outer circle. Once you go inside, you analyze all this collected data, right? generate ideas out of that, and then shortlist ideas based on certain parameters. And then you go inside to the third circle where you prototype the ideas, do some concept testing with users, and then you get the final gold mine, the product ideas. So this is the framework that we came up with. As you can see, you know, these are all you know, concepts that we use in the user-centered design, user experience world. Um, you know, the methodology, uh, specifically, I'd like to talk about uh, you know, the first step where we conducted interviews with product managers, sales, marketing, CXOs, internal experts, external experts, because you need to, needed to know about the domain as well. Um, and then, you know, the kind of deliverables also are pretty familiar to everyone. So, fine, this model is there, but what did we do? So I'm going to show actually what we did using this particular model and what the results were. So this particular company is one of the largest pre-procurement domain company in the UK. They have about 800 of the largest 
customers or buyers in the world, Shell, Exxon Mobil, Toyota, to name a few. And they also have 77,000 suppliers on their platform. And all of these suppliers and buyers are grouped according to different communities, concept of a community. And they came up with this question, the goal to define supplier value and find products that would work for them in the near future. Okay. So this is a generic ecosystem. There's a buyer portal and there are many other products. These are buyers on this side. Then there are suppliers. They also have a portal. And then there is a global back office portal as well. So we were involved in the design or redesign of that for over two years. And after that, this question came, luckily. So we were kind of familiar with the domain and the products as well. Um, so looking at the entire framework, I'm not going to talk about everything, but not to undermine the importance of the first two steps of talking to business leaders and, talking, and, and looking at the desk research of the industry and all of the trends. Okay? Those have helped a lot in shaping up the ideas, apart from the very important part of user research. So I'm going to concentrate only on users, their current needs, and analyze the data. I'm just going to quickly show you how we did. So when we went to the users, if you remember experience over time, we did a kind of combined open user research with some ethnographic techniques. And we found out the needs of those suppliers uh, across the world, I mean, from the various locations. And we paid special attention to the emotions, the said and unsaid emotions that they were talking about, right? So if you take, take a look at the first one, before usage, anticipated user experience, when we asked that, those questions, everybody was signing on that platform because they thought they would get opportunity to do business with buyers. So the emotion there was hope. I'm hoping for more business, right? And from that, we came up with certain values. And here, you know, the value for money was strongly conveyed by the users. So we did all this research. We gathered all the insights and emotions. We came back and looked at, you know, the chart and said, which values are being talked about here by the users, okay? And then from all the user studies and all the different insights, this is the entire model of values. So actually you can see what the current products or current experience is providing the user. They are providing no hedonic value at all. That is obvious because this is more of a transaction type application. A lot of functional values and that is also missing. The values are missing from there. And also a lot of social values are missing. So the company needs to think about you know, those things. If I can build social values in any of my product ideas, then that would really work for them. So I'll show you how, how we did that. You know, after the insights and entire research, when we came down to the values, all values that were not present in the products were marked as negative. And we wanted to convert them into positive values so that we could you know, get to products that probably would be successful. We are still trying to test it. So for example, these are the service values. And the idea was, while completing registration, allow the supplier to provide more information on the projects. A second idea was control over communication. So the suppliers wanted a choice to be able to decide how much a buyer can see them and how much of a buyer they can see back. Third idea was business intel. You know, how many times I appeared in the search, how many times you know, buyers saw me, so on and so forth. And recommendation by other suppliers, which is, which is still not there. So all of these ideas kind of culminated into, because you have to manage ideas, it culminated into a solution. The idea generation process itself took a long time. And it all you know, came down to what are the industry trends, what is the social buzz, what does the competitor is doing, right? 
and the user research and the values thereof. So 100 plus ideas were generated for them and some of the values that were addressed by new ideas are kind of given here. So what was the effect on values for supplier showcase? Let's take that example. So you see this is the model for that particular idea and all of the negative values are converted into positive values, right? So a guiding principle of value to create an idea that would be probably successful. But how do we know that? We have to take it again back to the users and that's what we did exactly. And these were the user responses. This is extremely valuable. I like the concept. Will help create and portray my true capabilities. Will be able to include qualitative details that are crucial to win contracts. And again, you know, this testing was done with all different suppliers with a particular sample size. And from that, we came up with a roadmap. And that roadmap, there was, you know, certain criteria that we use. What is the value to the user? How much easy or difficult it is to implement this particular idea? What is the optimum investment that is required by the company? And what is the time to market? And so these are some of the ideas uh, that we came up with. And not all ideas would have worked tomorrow because the biggest problem, the biggest value deficit there was trust deficit with this company. Now suppliers are not going to jump on a platform immediately and say I want to connect with other suppliers tomorrow. First, these people needed to build the trust with that company and therefore started with smaller ideas that would give high value to the suppliers but at a very low cost or no cost to the suppliers at all. That would work the best. And that's the reason these ideas were kind of targeted for 2016 and beyond and 2020. And only time will tell whether this hypothesis works or not. Thank you. Any questions? I can take one question. Two? Okay. Questions? Okay. Yes. Either you have understood or not at all. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's okay. Her question is how did we measure the negativity of the value, right? The number. And the number. So the number is basically a simple frequency of how many times the user said the same thing or how many times the user wanted that particular value. So from different insights, you can probably point towards same similar values, right? So then we used to add that number, right? So when the user said, I, I don't know how to even, you know, complete this task, for example, this is basically ease of use value, right? right? So similar insights from the research would point to ease of use value and then you keep on adding those numbers. Then that's a guide to you when you're actually redesigning something. Right. Saying users are wanting more of, you know, the functional values rather than personalization values. They are not looking at. And good question, I, I forgot to tell one thing. One of the things that their competitors had done were spend millions of dollars and create mobile apps in pre-procurement. And these people were not ready to invest so much till they knew that. Not a single idea here is mobile based. I mean, we had mobile based ideas, but they were outright rejected by the suppliers. They did not want to do any of their tasks on the mobile any of the tasks. So that's a big insight. Think of, you know, the company spending millions because their competitors were, were doing that and getting nothing out of it.